Kia ora. Oh, there we go. Kia ora koutou, everybody. Um, welcome uh, to today's webinar, um, last one for 2022. Um, and I'm just going to chat to you all while the numbers just tick in, just as people join us. Um, my name's Poppy. You've probably seen me here before if you've um, attended any of our previous webinars. I'm really excited today to be talking about the innovation program um, that was uh, obviously recently uh, some more information was announced by the minister. So hopefully this webinar will give you some more helpful advice around um, putting those applications in. Um, so we'll kick off today with a quick karakia. Um, and this is the MB karakia and uh, those of you who uh, are not fluent can see the translation um, on the screen just there. Uh, so this one is uh, Tāpia to mana kia mau kia māia ka huri taku aro ki te pai ka hurangi ke rera te o rangwa moku mā mahi tahi ka ora ka puawai a mātua mahi ka toa ka pono ka tika tihei mauri ora. So just a little bit of housekeeping um, before I hand over to our um, experts today. Um, few things about this webinar, like usual, we will be recording this webinar so that those of you who have to shoot off and wait through or those of you who weren't able to join us uh, at 10 a.m. on Thursday will be able to watch this um, later. Um, so just bearing in mind with that recording, that does mean that anything that gets typed into the chat or the question and answers uh, will be recorded and people who watch the recording will be able to um, see those things. Um, and on the subject of questions, we're obviously expecting that there's probably going to be quite a lot of questions today. Um, if you do have questions, the way to ask those is to pop them in the question and answer um, function. So that should be at the bottom of your screen under Q&A. Um, and what we'll be doing is we've got some um, of our MB experts on the line to type answers to those questions as they come through. Um, and we'll try and do our best to answer all of them uh, while we're live today, but uh, we're conscious we might not be able to. Oh, I'm on mute. Okay. Um, are people able to hear me okay? Kia ora, Shay. Can, you, can, you, can I get like a sign from someone? I've got a thumbs up that people can hear me. I see the mute icon, but I can hear everything. Well, that's good. So I won't repeat myself then. Um, hopefully everyone's been able to hear. Um, Quickly, so we're recording. Um, you'll be able to see copies of anything that gets popped in the chat. Um, thank you for flagging with me. Okay, good. Um, sorry, just recollecting myself there. Uh, questions, we'll try and type answers to the questions. Anything that we can't get to today, we will um, pop the answers for those in the email that we send to you all after this webinar, um, which will also have a link to the recording so you can revisit this or share it with other people who haven't seen it. Um, right, so I'll roll on to quickly introducing our speaker for today. Um, we are very fortunate to have Alice Russen with us. Um, she's one of the uh, MB officials who's been working um, very closely on this particular project. Um, and so that's everything from me. I, I will hand over to Alice. Awesome. Uh, kia ora koutou. Um, ko Alice Russen Aho. I'm Alice. Um, I'm a senior policy advisor and the NB Tourism branch. So very excited to chat to you all today about the innovation program. Uh, I know it's been a long time coming for lots of you. It was announced in April um, by the minister as part of budget in May, and um, it was announced as fully open um, by the prime minister last week at the tourism summit. So we're very excited um, to have this webinar with you all and uh, take you through um, the program. So uh, in terms of an overview, we're going to talk about the program's purpose. Um, we're going to go through stream one, we're going to go through stream two. We'll talk about the application process for both of those streams. And then if we get time, we will answer some questions at the end. I'm sure there'll be lots as we go, as Poppy said. So um, just pop them in the chat and we'll try and answer them as we can. And if we can't, we'll come to them via email. So uh, like I said, um, the Tourism Innovation Programme was opened last week by the Prime Minister. Um, it's a $54 million contestable fund um, and applicants will be able to receive grants from the government. So Stream 1 applications and Stream 2 expressions of interest are now open. 
Um, and the information that I'll cover today is on MB's website and it's in our guidance document for applicants too. So um, have a look at those to see if um, your questions are still there. And if they are, you're welcome to reach out to us via the Tourism Innovation Inbox as well, which is on our website. So we will kick off with who can apply. So the program is open to individuals and organisations that can demonstrate a New Zealand presence. Um, that being said, central governments cannot apply for funding. Um, and we do welcome applications for projects led by groups of individuals or groups of businesses. That's very much welcome and encouraged. If you would like to do a consortia approach to a project, that's absolutely welcome. And our website has guidance about how you can demonstrate your New Zealand presence, so whether you're an individual or an organisation. And just putting it out there, there's no minimum or maximum cap on your organisation in terms of whether you can apply. You can be a very, very large business or you could be a very small entity or charity, any of that. So very wide eligibility in terms of applicants. So many of you will have seen uh, the purpose of the program is to support four things. So the first one is to stimulate, catalyze, or achieve transformative innovation. The second is to deliver on our core values of tourism. The third is to seek to achieve at least one of the five program outcomes. And the fourth is that it needs to be applicable to the New Zealand Aotearoa visitor journey. So, um, we just want to make it clear from the outset, so this innovation program is not like other government support programs that have been put forward through COVID for the last two and a half years, and it's not support for general business as usual or kind of, you know, scaling up for a very busy summer period that we know you're planning for. Um, the program is meant to be focused on progress projects that are going to have a really meaningful and transformative impact. So we're really looking for big ideas that are going to um, catalyze change across the industry. I will cover all four of these in more detail, so we'll get into it. So the first one, stimulate or catalyze or achieve transformative innovation. So we've defined transformative innovation as a fundamental or disruptive shift towards new or different and better systems, business models, processes, experiences, or products that will create a meaningful impact across the New Zealand Aotearoa visitor journey. So we're not going to provide you guidance on whether we think your idea is innovative or not. That's up to you to argue your case if you decide to put forward an ap application. Um, but for some pointers, you're welcome to check out the MB website and use the self-assessment tool to kind of frame up your idea and see if you think that it might be considered transformative. And also have a think about whether your project is actually on the list of excluded activities, which we'll come to in a second. So something that's business as usual or something that you're already doing, like offering an existing product, that's not considered innovative for this program. And what the government is really looking forward for sorry, in this program is to fund projects that are world first or ideas that might have been used overseas um, and would create a really big change if they came to New Zealand and they might be a first in our country. The next is um, delivering on the core values of tourism. So um, the core values of tourism come from the New Zealand government Aotearoa tourism strategy and um, some New Zealand story work as well. So the core values of tourism are tiaki, whanaunatanga, manaki, and potikitanga. And so when you submit your application, um, you're required to provide details about how you'll meet one of these values of tourism. You can tick more than one, but we're only asking for you to demonstrate one at that stage. So the third part of the program's purpose is the five outcomes. So this is kind of the main part of it. We've got five outcomes. We have climate, reducing carbon emissions resulting from tourism or having a positive impact on the climate. We have sustainability, improving the environmental sustainability of tourism through enhancing our natural environment and biodiversity. We have resilience, so improving the resilience of tourism to future changes, impacts and shocks. We have technology, so lifting the productivity and capability of the tourism sector through technology. And then finally, Taonga Māori, promoting and protecting Taonga Māori through the Aotearoa New Zealand visitor journey. So just a note with that last one. 
So for Taonga Māori, this project needs to be led by Māori, iwi hapu ufano, and the definition of Taonga Māori comes from Y262. Um, so that's a Waitangi tribunal claim about um, concerns for New Zealand law and policy affecting Māori culture and identity. So that definition of what Taonga Māori is can be found in our guidance document on the website, but you're also welcome um, to come to the inbox with questions about that as well. So when you submit your application, you will be assessed on how you meet one primary outcome. So you pick one that you think your project is going to meet the most but you're also welcome to have secondary outcomes. So you can also say, for example, my project's gonna have a huge impact on tourism resilience, but I also think at the same time, it's gonna hit that technology outcome too. So you're welcome to have a secondary outcome. And if you do, that potentially could boost your um, project's assessment relative to others that might only hit one. That being said, we don't want you to just tick all five in the hope that you'll cover them all. So they do really need to be relevant. And finally, the fourth aspect of the program's purpose is that you, it needs to be applicable to the New Zealand Aotearoa visitor journey. So we've defined the visitor journey starting at the moment that someone is inspired to come to New Zealand and they start thinking, maybe I'll book a trip here. And it ends the moment they get home and they're a storyteller uh, for New Zealand and they provide inspiration for others to come back or maybe themselves to come back as well. So your innovation can focus on one area of the visitor journey or it can focus on multiple areas across the visitor journey but you need to make sure that it's relevant to tourism and the visitor experience. So we're not looking just for new buildings for example, it really needs to relate to tourism. Um, and I will cover just in this point, it's really important that it's not about marketing either. So it's not about bringing in new customers and that sort of thing. So the visitor journey isn't just focused on international visitors either. So obviously this diagram is quite international focused, but your innovation can also focus on domestic tourism too. So that in-trip area. And just putting it out there, um, we're really looking to fund a mix of projects across those five outcomes and across the different parts of the visitor journey. So we're looking for some variability as well. All right, so co-funding. We'll get a little bit into more detail about the types of co-funding, depending whether you go for a stream one project or a stream two project in a second um, as we get there. But as a general rule, your co-funding can't come from a central government agency. So everybody needs to have co-funding. You either need to be able to have it or co-source it, um, and it has to be financial. So we're not asking for any kind of in-kind donations or any kind of in-kind co-funding. It needs to be financial. And you are also welcome to provide more than 50% of your portion of co-funding. So um, you can ask for less than 50%. And those rules, the same rules apply no matter how much you're asking for up to that 50% amount. And I will just make it clear that you can't ask for co-funding for any retrospective costs. So you might have started a project and now you're thinking, oh, this definitely fits with the innovation program. We're going to meet the program's purpose and we think we're eligible for funding. You can't apply for any funding um, retrospective of what you've started already. So you would need to plan for funding for future stages of that project. So. Are any activities excluded? Yes, there are excluded activities and um, funding cannot be solely used for any of the following. So general business as usual. Um, it can't be used for upgrading a business or a product to be more sustainable or more eco-friendly or to have better technology. Um, it can't be used for marketing or brand development. It cannot be used for drafting of destination management plans. Like I said, no retrospective costs, no qualifications and no infrastructure either. So there might be elements of these within your project. For example, you might be doing marketing for your new innovation and that's fine, but you can't apply for funding purely for marketing, if that makes sense. If you do have questions about this and you're not quite sure, you're welcome to um, send an email to our inbox and we can help you work it out. But there's also other application support um, available while you do complete your application, which we'll come to, who might also be able to help you at that point. So now we'll talk about stream one. 
I appreciate this has been quite a lot of information already um, and it's going to get a little bit more detailed. So I'll try and take it slowly, but we'll get through as much of it as we can. So stream one is called the discovery project. So this is innovative solutions based projects that might require further feasibility work before you come and apply for full developmental support. So stream one has $1 million total allocated and we are willing to contribute between 10,000 and 25,000 per successful project. So like the diagram on the right hand side shows, if your total project cost was $50,000, you would co-fund 25 and the government would co-fund 25. And your stream one project needs to be completed within four months of you signing a contract. So it's a really short amount of time to complete some feasibility work to help you test your innovation, to see whether it's feasible, to work out your business case, all that sort of thing, so that you can then consider applying for additional funding. The main point for stream one is that there is a list of approved activities. So you must use your stream one funding for one or more of these activities. So either concept validation or testing, concept development, which could include design sprints, but doesn't have to be that specific methodology, sourcing relevant expertise, partners, skill sets to deliver your project, consultancy support to help you do a project plan or a business case, acceleration or scaling up testing or getting advice, and then preparing a business plan or a project plan. Um, we will also say that you're welcome to consider an external accelerator or incubator program to help deliver your activities if you think that's relevant. If you would like to and you think that your project would benefit from that, you would need to talk to us as we'll make the decisions about who's eligible to go through those accelerator programs. So just making it clear that for Stream 1, anything outside of that list is not eligible for any Stream 1 funding. Okay. So stream two, so stream two, uh, the, de the development projects. So these are the projects that um, the government is really looking to fund, which is why um, the majority of this $50 million available is allocated to stream two. So stream two is for innovative solutions based projects that are validated and they have a full proposal and a business case. So these are the real transformative concepts that the government wants to fund. We're looking for a few really big plays um, and we're looking for things that are going to be really impactful across the sector. So the government will contribute between $100,000 and $10 million per successful project and you would need to complete this project within a two-year time frame. Now in terms of Stream 2, there's no list of prescribed activities like Stream 1. Um, but you just need to make sure that you're not applying for funding for that excluded list of activities, which we covered earlier. So there's two options for Stream 2 co-funding. So the first example, so the first image is um, a typical Stream 2 project. So this is where the applicant will co-fund 50% and the government will co-fund 50%. So the total project cost would be 5 million. Uh, the applicant will put in two and a half and the government will put in two and a half. However, we do have wiggle room in stream two and we have a second option for projects that are going to have significant positive community-wide or sector-wide benefits. And so for this type of project, um, applicants could be eligible to receive up to 75% of co-funding from the government. So that $10 million cap still remains but you as the applicant would be required to put in less and the government would put in more because it would have significant benefits um, in terms of your community or across the sector. So if you're interested in applying for Stream 2 and you think that your innovation is gonna be um, in that second group, so it um, is gonna have a significant impact, um, you will need to demonstrate in your application form why you think that uh, that's the case. And that decision about whether it is significant and whether the impact would be positive will be assessed by MB during the application stage. All right, so we're now going to move on to the application process. Um, so there are two different types of application processes just to make things super complicated, but there's one for stream one and one for stream two. We'll take you through them both. Um, and all this information is also on our website if you need any help. 
So stream one applications is a one step process. So you will complete and submit your application, which is um, available, the form is available on MB's website. And we would really recommend that as you complete your application for stream one, you also use the guidance document that's available on our website too and consider getting some support from our application support providers as well. So we'll talk about that in a moment, but um, basically if you'd like some help while you draft your application, come to MB and we can help get you that support as well. So you will submit your application. So you submit it via the in Tourism Innovation Inbox and it will be assessed by MB on a monthly basis. Um, We'll notify you of the outcome once we've assessed your project, and then you will have four months from the moment you sign the contract to deliver that project. Once you've completed your Stream 1 project, um, and if it shows that it's been successful, so for example, if you've done some design sprints and it showed that your innovation looks like it's going to be really impactful and everything's showing that it's ready to go and you just need some funding for it to be delivered, then you can contact MB. Um, and consider applying for Stream 2 funding. So you can then come back in the process and then ask for a significant amount of money to actually deliver your innovation. So Stream 1 is open now. The application form is on the website and we're taking applications now. And you need to get your application in by the 3rd of May. So they'll be assessed on a rolling basis every month by MB and they close on the 3rd of May. So key dates for Stream 1, like I said, Stream 1 is open for applications, assessed on a monthly basis, and then closing on the 3rd. It's really important to know that for Stream 1, the funding is going to be allocated on a first-in, first-served basis. So um, it's not there's not a specific portion of that $1 million across each monthly round. It's just first-in, first-served, the most competitive ideas um, that will have the best impact will get that funding. So if all Stream 1 funding is allocated before the rounds close on the 3rd of May, it will shut early. Cool. So moving on to Stream 2 application process. So this is a two-stage process. Um, so what you need to do is you need to complete and submit your EOI. So your expression of interest form is available on MB's website. And we, again, recommend that you use the guidance document while you complete your application form um, to make sure that you can put in the most competitive expression of interest. You will submit your expression of interest to MB via the tourism inbox again, um, and it will be assessed on a monthly basis by MB. And the most uh, so sorry, no, I'll take that back. So the projects that meet the eligibility criteria, so your you as an applicant are eligible to receive funding and we, your project meets the program's purpose and the criteria, will be invited to submit a full application. So this is why we say that it's a two-stage process because you'll put in an EOI, it will be assessed, and then if you're eligible, then you get to submit a second application, which is what we're calling a full application. So this full application will need to include a business case and information will be provided to applicants about what needs to be covered in that business case um, when they receive notification that they've successfully proceeded to the next round. Full applications are going to be assessed in three rounds in 2023. So um, the dates will be up on the next slide for you, but basically your full application will be assessed both by MB and by an expert advisory panel, which is um, four members of um, the sector who have been chosen by the minister for their experience with tourism, with governance, with government funding, and with innovation and Māori development and connections. Um, so though they will also be assessing all the applications and the minister of tourism will make all funding decisions. Um, once the minister's made his decisions, we'll notify you of the outcome, and then you have two years to complete your project, as we've said. So Stream 2 is now open for EOIs, um, and the final date for Stream 2 EOIs is the 1st of September, so that gives you enough time to get into the final funding round for Stream 2 full applications. So there are, like we said, three Stream 2 funding rounds. So there, 
the stream two EOIs are now open, but the full applications are going to be assessed in three rounds. So round one is on the 28th of February next year. Round two is on 30 June next year. And round three is on the 31st of October. So in rounds one and two, there is $20 million available in each of those rounds to be allocated to projects. And then in round three, there's the $9 million left over, plus any underspend from rounds one and two that hasn't been allocated and available. So if your application is competitive, but it doesn't receive funding in rounds one or two, MB, can, will, MB will invite you to research. Submit your application for that third and final round. All right, so we have alluded to um, support that's available to applicants while they're drafting their applications. So advice is available to everyone who wants to apply for funding. So that's at any stage from the moment you think, hey, I've heard about the innovation program and I think I have an idea that might be eligible, all the way to the moment that you hit send um, in your Outlook and you send it into MB Tourism to be assessed. So advice is available um, in terms of helping out if you're eligible for the program, um, working out how to prepare your application form for Stream 1 or your Stream 2 EOI or application form, um, advice about how to lift the quality of your application, where you might be able to co-source funding. So they're not going to provide support about how to get it, but they might be able to help you work out where you might be able to get it. Um, how you might prepare your business case for Stream 2 if you've been invited to put forward a full application um, and what other advice might be needed to help support that business case if you were to put forward a Stream 2 full application. And then considering what other community sector or other partners might be able to help deliver your project. So if you would like advice on your application, there's nationwide advice avail available for everyone from New Zealand Māori Tourism and Business South. So you don't need to be in a specific region to access this. Everyone is welcome to um, use this advice. So if you would like help with your application, so the help that we just talked about, you're welcome to email the Tourism Innovation Inbox and we can link you up with either New Zealand Māori Tourism or Business South. Um, so when you do send us that email, you're welcome to let us know if there's one provider that you would like to work with. Um, and this might depend on the type of innovation you'd like to explore or your business or um, whether you're requiring specific Kaupapa Māori support. Um, and what we will just say is that um, the role of New Zealand Māori Tourism and Business South is an independent function from MB. So they don't have any part to play in the assessment process. Um, so you can use their experience to help determine your eligibility or to help lift the competitiveness of your application. So they won't be able to tell you whether your application will be successful or if you'll receive funding, um, but they can help you make sure that you can put forward the most competitive application possible. Um, and the final thing just to point out with the support available from New Zealand Māori Tourism and Business South is that you can only get support from one. So you can't um, get support from both while you draft your application. So you need to just, like we said, think about who um, might be able to provide you with the best support that you're looking for throughout the process. So I appreciate that that has been a significant amount of information and in quite a short amount of time. So I thought we'll just quickly go over a summary of the two streams, just so that everyone can kind of see on one page the difference between the two, um, and then we can open up for questions. So like we've said, stream one is for projects that um, require further, further feasibility work to determine if they're eligible, and they might need some help to do a business case or to work out if their project's ready to be implemented. So in stream one, you must use the funding for one of the activities or more on the prescribed list of Stream 1 activities. You need to deliver your Stream 1 project um, by four months and you are eligible to receive between $10,000 and $25,000 per project. Um, your co-investment required is at least 50% and the total amount allocated for Stream 1 projects is $1 million. So in comparison, Stream 2 
This is for projects that have a full proposal and a business case, and they're really ready to be developed and delivered, essentially. The idea is ready, the business case is ready, it's time to put it into action. So the activities that can be funded, there's no specific list for Stream 2, but you just need to make sure that you're not applying for any of the activities that are listed on our excluded activities list. You have two years to deliver your Stream 2 project, and you can apply for between $100,000 and $10 million per project. So as a baseline, you'll need to co-source at least 50% of that, so at least 50% of your total project costs. Or if you have significant positive community or sector-wide benefits, then you may be required to only co-source 25% for your project up to that $10 million. And like we said, the total amount available for Stream 2 projects is that $49 million. So this is where the government is really looking for some big plays, some transformative ideas, um, things that are going to be groundbreaking, they're going to be inspiring, they might be a world first, they might be a New Zealand first, um, used in a different way. So this is where the majority of the money is being allocated. All right. So... I cannot see if there are questions, but I'm sure there are. So I might hand over. Here we go. I can see them now. I can see that um, there are a lot of already answered questions. So that's fabulous. Alrighty. So we have from an anonymous attendee, could funding be used to set up a tourism accelerator program to support tourism operators? So that would depend whether you're applying for Stream 1 or Stream 2, because Stream 1 has a specific list of projects. Um, for Stream 2, that would, um, that would depend whether it meets the program's purpose. So what you'd need to do is you'd need to put in an application and sort of argue that case but it would need to make sure that it hits across all points of the purpose of the program cool I can see questions are being answered as we go so Aaron has asked how detailed does your budget need to be for stream fund one funding do you require multiple quotes or can it just be a global figure with a rougher breakdown of costs so Aaron, um, I would suggest having a look at the Stream 1 application form that will have all the information you need about um, the funding and the budgets that are required. But if you still have questions, you're welcome to come to the inbox and um, we can provide you with some specific guidance on that as well. Cool. So, I can see that Trent has um, a question about um, the definition and, and that it excludes work um, on the experience economy. So what about virtual and metaverse strategy or product development? This would be a world first or a fundamental disruptive shift. So um, if we go back to the visitor journey, there's definitely a section, Trent, about experiences. So I would say that that's absolutely part of the visitor journey. That's one of the things that people do when they're in New Zealand or when they're traveling around New Zealand um, are those activities. So I would consider that that is part of the visitor journey, definitely. Cool, so next question um, from Fergus Brown in stream two, is there a definition of infrastructure which is excluded? Um, we don't have a specific definition of infrastructure. I think it's um, pretty known what is infrastructure, but um, if you do have questions, you're welcome to come to us. Um, so we're not looking at buildings, we're not looking at um, car parks um, or other things that are eligible for other government funding processes, for example, the Tourism Infrastructure Fund. Um, but if you're not clear, either come to us or come to um, New Zealand Māori Tourism or Business South and we can help you determine if it is on that list of excluded activities. Awesome. Next question from Graham. So he said, will this presentation be shared on the website? So my understanding is that um, it is being recorded. So we will share out that link. And um, if it is requested, we'd be more than happy to put it 
on the website if that would be useful for people to access um, later on or as they're doing their application. So more than happy to um, facilitate that, Graham, if that's helpful. Uh, so next question, Simon. Simon, oh, nope, it's gone. I think it's been answered. Cool. Um, next question. Is it acceptable to have a project that combines tourism and education? So absolutely, that's just fine. Um, so long as your project meets the four parts of the purpose, so it's considered transformative innovation, it um, meets at least one of the core values of tourism, it hits across the visitor journey, which I think is the most important part for your question, but also it um, meets one, at least one of those five outcomes. So that's up to you to kind of demonstrate that in your application form. Uh, question for TECNZ. Um, what is the reason is that SMEs appear to be disadvantaged if larger businesses are submitting applications and have big balance sheets to co-fund when SMEs don't have balance sheet reserves to co-fund? Uh, thanks for this question. Um, so uh, as we've said earlier in the application form when we talked about who was eligible, we, um, we definitely recommend and encourage SMEs um, or smaller groups, smaller businesses. It might be a collection of charities. It might be a collection of iwi or Māori Land Trust to come together and create consortia. So you're welcome to put in an application on behalf of multiple businesses. So if multiple SMEs would like to get together, that's absolutely fine. Uh, next question from Tonya. I may have missed the answer, but can we submit more than one application in both Stream 1 and Stream 2? So, um, Tonya, you're welcome to submit um, more than one application in both of those streams. Um, if they're for different projects, that's just fine. And um, if, for example, one of your projects doesn't make it through, um, we can provide some guidance on how you might be able to become eligible, where you can sort of lift that application to become more competitive as well. Awesome. Well, I can see that there aren't any more questions. Oh, just as I said that. Next question. So Simon has said, if an applicant was applying for a smaller percentage of project costs versus a, a larger percent, and they already have raised funding, would this add to the potential outcome success? Uh, I, we can't say that right now. I don't think that having more or less would make a difference. It's not... Um, it's not something that's assessed at the assessment stage that access to your funding, um, but you're welcome to apply for less than 50% of the project costs. Next question from Sifu. Um, would partnership projects with tourism implications for our Pacific Island neighbours be considered with the same weight as just New Zealand? So I think it all goes back to the program's purpose. So in particular, you need to make sure that it's talking about the visitor journey, so the tourism visitor journey in New Zealand, Aotearoa. So if you think your partnership project um, is going to have, it's going to hit across one point of that journey or multiple points of that journey, then yes, it would be eligible, but that's probably where you'll need to consider um, how your project fits within the program's purpose. Uh, another question from TEC. If the fund is not drawn upon to the full amount, will government consider making co-funded ideas for SMEs to grants? Um, so we can't say anything about that at this stage. Obviously, applications have been open for only one week um, and the first assessment round is going to be held for Stream 1 applications and Stream 2 EOIs in December. So there's been no decisions about um, that at all. Obviously, we would love to allocate all the funds um, to these innovative ideas so that we can, you know, really see some transformative impacts across the um, tourism sector. Um, another question about a project that combines tourism and education. So I think we've covered this one, but you're, you're welcome to have a project that hits across, but you need to make sure that it's eligible across that visitor journey and as well it's meeting the other parts of the program's purpose. 
Um, the other thing we'll say is that you can't get your co-funding from another government agency. So you couldn't go to um, the Ministry of Education or another education facility that's a central government agency and try and get your co-funding from them as well. So you'll need to consider that. Uh, next question from Helen. Can you apply for both funds if you think your business is ready to go, but you're not 100% sure if the government would provide some feasibility study first? The answer to that is I'm not actually sure, Helen. Um, yeah, you're welcome to send um, the tourism innovation inbox an email with some more information if you'd like. I don't think we'd considered that yet. Um, so we can come back to you with an answer for that um, via email if that helps. There's a question for you in the chat as oh, yeah? well from Nick. Awesome. Sorry, I haven't got the chat open. Give me 10 seconds. Um, kia ora, Nick. So Nick has asked, if a project had previously received a grant funding from another government agency, for example, ECA, would it be still eligible to receive funding through this fund? So um, for Stream 1, probably not, because if you've received funding from another government agency, you won't be at that stage where you're needing to do that prescribed list of activities. Um, if it's for Stream 2, potentially, but what you'd need to consider is whether you're hitting all those aspects of the program's purpose. So if it's eligible for funding from ECA, um, you need to make sure that when you're what you're applying for is still tourism related. Um, and you would need to make sure that you're not using the same amount of co-funding from ECA as your part of co-funding. So you can apply for, for example, money from us, um, but you can't use 50% of your co-funding from ECA if that makes sense. Um, if that's a little bit clear, um, I can understand that there's, there's been so much information kind of thrown at you today, um, and it is um, quite detailed. You're welcome to reach out to us via the inbox. Um, otherwise, um, we'd welcome you reaching out to us and we can put you in context with um, New Zealand Māori Tourism or Business South to help provide you with that application support as well. And they'll be able to help with these questions too as you go along kind of forming your idea and your application. Um, all right. Another one from Seema here in the chat and one from Simon too. Cool. Um, give me two seconds. Okay, so Sina has said, I've asked this earlier in the chat, but I don't think it's been answered yet. Will the use of internal company resources be seen as part of the co-investment or is that considered in kind? So that is that is part of your co-funding. That's just fine. Uh, Simon has another question. If you have applied to another government agency, for example, the Heritage Fund, while not being sure of the tourism fund's success, would this be detrimental, noting the heritage could be forfeited? So... Um, you, as part of the application form, I understand that you need to tell us where else you've applied for funding at the same time. Um, and if your application, for example, was successful, then we would need to have a conversation with you to ensure that that portion of funding that you're getting from us is not also being supplemented by funding from another government agency. So um, from MB's end, we just need to make sure that you're not double dipping in multiple pies, essentially. Uh, another question from Debbie. Would be great if these questions and answers in the chat and the Q&A are captioned and shared also. Yep, that's absolutely fine, Debbie. More than happy to do that, um, particularly if we put it on the webinar. The webinar, sorry, on the website, that's just fine. Um, another question from Teresa. Will you publish a list of FAQ from today and further conversations with potential applicants? Um, we can definitely do that um, as we send out today's link. That's just fine. Um, if we continue to get um, sort of FAQs through our inbox, um, we'll actually just put that information out to everybody rather than an FAQ, because if it's coming up for lots of people, then chances are um, we need to answer it. So we can either answer that through our channels, through MB, or we can help, um, we can share it via New Zealand Māori Tourism and Business South as well with those applicants as they're getting support as we go.
Okay. I think, oh, I'm frozen. I think you're back now. I'm back? Okay, good. Thank you. All right, sorry, I just got a thing saying your internet is unstable, which is probably the worst message your computer can show you in the middle of a webinar. All right, well, um, on behalf of myself and the rest of the tourism branch, thank you so much for joining us for um, the webinar on the innovation program. Thank you for your very um, awesome questions. I appreciate it's been heaps of info kind of dumped on you and you're probably just getting your heads around what the program is um, after it was announced and opened last week. So um, appreciate um, your patience and your thoughts and your questions. Um, like we said, if you still have questions, come to us by the inbox. We're more than happy to help. We can connect you with um, New Zealand Māori Tourism. We can connect you with Business South um, so that you can put in the best applications you possibly can. Um, so I will hand back over to Poppy um, to finish off with the MB closing karakia and we can finish 15 minutes early. Fabulous. Yeah, and um, just before we wrap up, a huge thank you from the, the MB webinar team this year as well. Um, some of you will have uh, attended some of our other webinars um, over this year and yeah, we've really appreciated having you there and, um, and hopefully... Um, discussing some really exciting topics um, and we're looking forward to hopefully sharing uh, a bit of a plan for next year with you um, later this year. Uh, so I'll close this off now. Kahiki te tapu, kia wātea ai te ara, kia tūruki ai te ao mārama, huie taikie. Kia ora everyone, have an amazing rest of your days and I look forward to hearing from you um, soon. <laughs>